You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. Chiming on with you and joining me in studio live, co host DC from the Pelican Eye View. What's going on, DC? Yo, ain't too much, man. We ain't got no more basketball to watch, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah, the Pelicans went down to the Golden State Warriors 113 to 104. We'll cover that today in podcast 191. That's right, fans. 191. And before we get started and hit you with the rundown, we're going to give you a round of applause. That's right, you. A round of supl- applause for joining us on the Pelican Post Game Report. Also, thank you for donating. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for all that you do as we continue to move forward covering the Pelicans and other uh, sport related matters. Now, getting into the rundown today, we'll be recapping on show 191. It's more like a walk down, how down everybody is. <laughs> what's no, what's ain't stats no running facts, no more. <laughs> stats, facts, <laughs> and interviews from Coach Al Gentry, Drew Holiday, and Anthony Davis. They'll it's the chime in. the last rundown, too, bro, for the season. This is the last rundown, so yeah. isn't that something? Yeah. Uh, but we, uh, some of our topics today will be the Pels. Couldn't get it, get, couldn't get it done. We'll say we'll tell you why they couldn't get it done. Break it down if you still care. I know there's a lot of sore <laughs> Pelicans fans out there. But listen, man, I'm sore too. But listen, we all adults about this here thing. We lost against a very good team, and uh, we just have to keep it moving and improve the team moving forward. That's it. I mean, but, you want to uh, go out to a number eight scene, or you want to lose to the champs? That's a good if point. If you got to pick a way to if lose. I gotta lose, if you got to lose, if I got to lose, let me lose against the eventual. Right. NBA champion Golden State Warriors. Yeah, if so, they go on and get the chip, you should feel a lot better about yourself. Champions, anyway. These are defending champions, right? right. So I agree with that. Uh, also, Anthony Davis and Drew Holiday had a hey, both had spectacular games. We'll talk about those guys in yeah, AD the topics. Almost had a twenty twenty game. Yeah, it was awesome, man. And then, of course, uh, this is uh, DC's topic. He wants to talk about Gentry's nine adjustments. Uh, the as he called it, the, the L-, L gentrification of the game plan, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that and then of course we we will uh recap the playoff series between the Pelicans and the Warriors and look ahead a little bit going into the future dealing with the New Orleans Pelicans. So without further ado, let's get right into it DC and start off with this as the Golden State Warriors beat the Pelicans 113 to 104 and it was a, a very very uh, interesting game from start to finish. Pelicans did their best to keep close in this game. Their best quarter was the fourth quarter where they put up 29. Their worst quarter when it was the third quarter where they only put up 19. But Golden State went had its best quarter by scoring 36 in that third quarter. So the mm. Pelicans, you could say the Pelicans, to a degree, lost the game in that third quarter. You know, But if you look at some of the statistics in this game, my man, Golden State uh, shot 48 of 99. The Pelicans 41 of 88 for 46%, almost 47% versus Golden State's 48%. The Pelicans were 10 of 24 from downtown in this game. Uh, Golden State was 7 of 27. Pelicans went to the line 16 times, converted 12 of those 16. Golden State 10 of 12 from the line. The Pelicans were out-rebounded by Golden State 52 to 44. And also... Golden State had 35 more, uh, assists versus uh, Pelicans, 26 assists. The turnovers, Pelicans had 14 points. I mean, excuse me, 14 turnovers and 24 points off those turnovers. The Pelicans uh, had, uh, gave up as, as well. And Golden State won the fast break battle as well, 26 to 19. But the Pelicans won the point in the paint battle, 56 to 42. So before we play out Gentry's and get Gentry's commentary, DC, uh, tell me quickly uh, your precision. I mean your uh, perception on 
what particular thing the Pelicans did wrong in this game that cost them to lose? Um, they had a lot of things they could have definitely cleaned up, but if I got to pick one thing, say third quarter, man. Third, third quarter. quarter. Yeah, that was, uh, I think, too. Rung the bell of this whole series, 96 points to 50, 56 or 54, the entire series. Right. So every single time that we lost the third quarter, we lost the game. That's um, interesting. And that's that's the thing that's followed us all all season. Yes. That could tie into this Al gentrification of the game plan, too. Uh <laughs> I mean, we, we just couldn't come out with the needed energy to be able to, to combat with a Golden State that was determined to end the series, man. Um, we couldn't really, I guess, fully blame it on the refs. We, we don't have any outs other than we didn't show up and do what we had to do this game, man. So I would have to blame the third quarter if I had to pick something because we only scored 19 points. And I believe they scored 30, 36. 36, it 36 was. to 19 in the third yeah, quarter. Yeah, that's, that's a very good thing. They couldn't recover thing, from man. that. Couldn't grab. A uh, very good commentary there, DC. I agree with that. I think the third quarter was vital. And this has been vital all series long with the Pelicans. Like you said, the Pelicans had solved that problem for a brief stint after the injury of DeMarcus Cousins when they acquired Nikolai Miritich. They did solve it for a little bit, but it cropped up. These ugly habits of poor defense and turnovers and playing terrible in the third quarter cropped up when you most didn't need it to crop up. But here's Coach L. Gentry and his thoughts. Yeah, we had some bad possessions, uh, and then we missed some easy shots. And so all of a sudden it's 10-0, and then uh, you know how that goes. Uh, I was, I mean, I didn't have but so many timeouts that I could use. And uh, then all of a sudden, you know, it ends up, you know, 24 to 5 or whatever it was, 25-4 or something like that. Uh, but you just got to be solid. And uh, I thought we missed some easy shots that deflated us a little bit. Uh, we also gambled a little bit on offensive rebounds uh, that put us in a pretty compromising position. But I think guys were just doing it. They, every, everything that was done uh, was done because they were trying to help our team. And... Uh, I mean, I couldn't be proud of a bunch of guys. Uh, uh, the way they come together, you know, the way they competed, the way they pull for each other. So, uh, I mean, we're playing against a great team, and I think that's where you got to understand that uh, this team has been the NBA champs two out of the last three years. And as I said, you know, could have possibly been NBA champs the last three years. And, uh, you know, I think they're hitting their stride and in a good groove right now. And you know, stuff is starting to, I think, get, you know, his wind back and his legs back, and, you know, they're just going to become better, you know. I think it'll be a, a, a great challenge uh, playing Houston, but, you know, they've been there before, and, uh, you know, it'll be a great series. Uh, what was your reaction to Dream on coming over uh, in your huddle in the first quarter? It. I don't have a reaction. That's Draymond. <laughs> Are you saying that, that should that have surprised me? No, it didn't surprise me. Uh, but, you know, it's just, I mean, I didn't see any reason to get upset about it or anything. I mean, we're just, we're talking and we're going to do what we're going to do. And, and you know, that's Draymond. So. Alvin, over here. Two-part question. One, what did you tell your players after the game? And two, in the aftermath of this game, do you consider this season a success? Um, That's Coach L. Gentry chiming in on the uh, game, uh, the information on the game from his perspective. Of course, uh, we may mention of this. We, if you follow and watch the game, uh, and we're going to talk about this in uh, D.C.'s uh, topic, the L. Gentrification thing, about the fact that, you know, you know, you're only using three guys off the bench. Now we talked about this before. I won't get into it, but if you listen to the previous show, uh, I attacked that heavily. I challenged and questioned his his uh, his game plan. You know, you're talking about pace and want to run, but you don't want to play nobody but three people off the bench. You're not gonna beat any goddamn body uh, worth anything by playing eight people a night. You know, unless you got eight LeBrons out there. I mean, I don't see how you're going to. But anyway, you uh, it, but you don't need but two LeBrons. You know? you know, but at the end of the day, Drew Holiday and Anthony Davis was spe spectacular in this game. I mean, absolutely spectacular. He started a little slow, but eventually got going, finished with 13, 34 points, 19 rebounds, three blocks. 
and he was 13 of 26 from the field, one or two from downtown, seven of nine from the free throw line in 46 minutes, 46 minutes. Drew Holiday was another guy, same way, 27 points, 11 assists, 10 rebounds, triple-double for Drew. He continued to, just, just to be the man. The new Drew Holiday is, is my second or maybe third favorite Pelican, you know, behind AD and DeMarcus. But it is this uh, it, the Pelicans heart and soul behind Davis and Holiday. You know, nobody else carried carried the day. Nikolai Miritich, somebody kidnapped him and took him somewhere because he didn't show up in this game. Maybe his production that he usually puts up might have helped uh, stall the series out. He put up just 12 points and seven rebounds. That's not bad numbers. For I was looking for more of a uh, output from their third best player. Uh, currently on the roster. Each one more had 10 points on four of 12 shooting from the field, one of three from downtown in the day. And Rajon Rondo, of course, you know, your uh, coach Gentry talk about Rondo's groin situation, which limited him to 21 minutes of play. He was three of seven from the field, one of two from downtown, finished with seven points, seven assists, and three steals in the game. Off the bench, Ian Clark came and he played 30 minutes of action, had nine points, uh, on four of nine shooting, one of three from downtown. He finished with nine. Darius Miller had five in 17 minutes. And uh, Solly Hill played just three minutes. So he really only played like three people, and Solly got three minutes. And it's just fascinating. But anyway, let's get to the next interview between Drew Holiday and Anthony Davis. They talk about their thoughts on the, the game five loss to go. Would you guys State. call this season a success? Whatever. Oh, yeah, I mean, anytime you. Don't win a championship, you know. I don't see how I could be successful. Um, we can take a lot of positive things from this season. Um, you know, of course, one of our main guys <clears throat> went out, um, and everybody doubted us. Everybody counted us out, and we were able to, you know, keep fighting, keep pushing as a unit, and um, able to come this far. So um, there's no moral victories, but uh, it's a lot that we can take from the season. But anytime you don't win, uh, you know, a championship. Uh, not sure how much success you really had. Anthony, you just you mentioned you referenced uh, Demarcus. Will you go to management this summer and and say, hey, you know, I'd I'd really like to see him back going into next season and beyond. Uh, I'm still trying to get over this. Uh, that's something that's you know be talked about later on. Um, right now, uh, just trying to get over this um, this series, this series loss and. Um, that's really it, honestly. Uh, when that time come, and when I get brought up, you know, we'll discuss it there. For Drew, you guys <clears throat> didn't have Rondo in the second half. You fall down by 26. I think a lot of teams at that point are going 1-2-3 Cancun. Why were you able to make it a game? Just think it's the characteristic of our team, honestly. Um, when one guy falls or one guy goes out, somebody else steps up. Uh, I think we did a good job of that tonight. Um, and also, we never give up. I think I said that last last game. Uh, no matter what the score is, no matter the time, whatever it is, we we, we play desperate, and I feel like we did that tonight. I think a lot of it is chemistry to be able to go through adversi adversity and just come out of it strong. Um, we never let anything keep us down. Uh, every time that something hit us, we hit them right back. So um, as a unit, uh, just again, our character is, is resilient. And I, we've honestly showed that all season.
That's Drew Holiday chiming in on his uh, thoughts after the game. And, of course, one of the reporters asked the question of, uh, about Anthony Davis's thoughts on DeMarcus Cousins' comeback. Of course, if Cousins was playing, the series would still be going on. We'd go seven. You know what? One of our t- key pieces is out. Uh, is not playing in the game. So we kind of playing with uh, with this, this this roster that was put together after that trade. So imagine if we had them for the full season. I, I see uh, several key pieces that, that wasn't playing. You know, like uh, we had Jamal. Uh, what's your boy Crawford? We had him. Jordan Crawford. Jordan Crawford didn't play. Michael Okafor didn't play. Marcus Cousins didn't play. Frank Jackson didn't play. <laughs> so, <laughs> Chic Diallo. <laughs> DM, the everybody's DMP'd. And we'll, when we come back on the other side of the break, after, we're going to get into it. We're going to talk more about some of these topics. We're going to cover the rest of the stuff on the other side of the break. You're listening to the Pelican Post Game Report. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans I Built. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal. Covering everything Pelicans. Attention everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts. With statistical analysis from G Balance. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash view. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, sports world? This Big Q from The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest down downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle, life spell with a Y, L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the sports coma with Big Q and the guys. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. That's right. For all things Pelicans, we are the Pelican Post Game Report Playoff Edition on the PRO Media Network. Kept covering the Golden State Warriors uh, win over the New Orleans Pelicans 113 to 104. Recapping and making, trying to make the sense of it. A lot of people then moved on and say, you know what, the hell with it. Uh, we're just gonna wait. Don't act like that. Don't act like that, people. We we mature fans here. We understand if you're gonna play the game, you're gonna win some and you're gonna lose some. At the end of the day, the reporter asked the man a question: Was it a successful season? You heard what Andy Davis say? No. I would. <laughs> and DC <laughs> says no, it's not. But uh, I think it is. You know, in, in many regards, the Pelicans went farther than they ever ever. Uh, uh, you know that a lot of people didn't think they were going to do. No, man, he said anytime well, you don't win the they championship, won a championship. It ain't well, that's what a superstar supposed to say. And I agree. You know, that's what a superstar supposed but to say. But if we want to be technical and we want to say the season was successful, it was because we got to the playoffs. <laughs> and that is the end to make it to the playoffs. But once you make it to the playoffs, you the new the new goal is to what win the championship. Mm-hmm. Well, if guess what, that's a playoff season though. Yes, but that's that. But the funny part is, if you opportunity, well, I don't know if you say it's funny, but they had they got a matchup against the defending world champion Golden State Warriors. I mean, what can you say? Four of those guys are future Hall of Famers, you know. And then they have, have and some of those guys Rogers, are actually man. starters on other people's teams. So I mean, if it comes down, you might have a point on the Houston yeah. thing. But we didn't draw Houston; we draw Golden State. But you wanted to test your metal up against a champion. You should have swapped places with Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> but you wanted to test your metal up against a championship no doubt, club. No doubt, no doubt. And this is what you get. 
you, you, you a four game to one series win by Golden State. They're the champions for the re- for a reason. But I do walk away from this series. I ain't trying to very kiss in- their ass. But what I'm saying is the reality is though, that's what this is. Because uh, outside of maybe one game, every other game we pretty much had a chance. We had a chance, even if it was just a fighter's chance. Two games that we lost, I feel like we had a real legitimate chance. Um, so I feel very encouraged knowing that we went toe to toe with the champs, and we just we didn't get decimated. I mean, at least we won a game, you know. And the game we won, uh, I can't just overlook it because there was nothing on that stat sheet that wanted us to win that game. When you seen how the referees was calling it, the Pelicans went and took that game, you know. So seeing them do that. And understanding that Rondo was hurt, understanding that Demarcus Cousins was hurt, understanding that uh, apparently Sheik Diallo and Mecca Ogafa and uh, John Crawford was hurt too, um, according to Al Gentry. <laughs> <laughs> then you you can come away. Or well, if you gonna consider hurt as DMP coach's decision, they were uh, me- they were mentally hurt <laughs> according to Al Gentry. Something was going on, but. Oh, if you want man. to consider that, How you man, you gonna beat the Golden State Warriors right. with seven we, people. Bro. With seven, seven on ten, we played seven on ten, and 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 we was in these games, man. So moving forward, uh, seeing what we do next year, and if we're in the same position a year from now, I think the Pelicans, you know, won't be so easily overlooked, and uh, Pelican Nation will definitely take it seriously. We're gonna be right back. Bucked up and ready to go because uh, I think we got something real special brewing down here in New Orleans, and we have the potential to really do it big. Er, <laughs> there you go. Well, let's hit some of these topics going into the show. Uh, Pelicans couldn't get the win. Why we broke that down a little early? We talked about maybe the underlying factors. The major one, DC and I agreed. It was the third quarter. Pelicans were hammered thirty-six to nineteen in the third quarter. They also gave up a boatload of turnovers. Uh, equating to 20-plus opposition points for Golden State Warriors. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. And plus, the defense could have – transition defense could have been a lot better. They allowed too many uh, wide-open jump shots, too many easy layups once again. And like I said, the same things that the Pelicans did when they struggled, it cropped up in this game once again. Nice break points. Yeah. All of that. So, when it comes down to it, you can't play this way and, and be the team as good as Golden State. Uh, let's go to the well, next we, topic. I, you know the crazy thing, though? Yes. We shot 41% from the three-point line and held them to 25% from the three-point line and found a way to lose this game. It's, 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 it's amazing, man. 41% from three-point line. They shot 25%. We found might a well way to lose 26, this 25. game. You as well say 26%, 25.9. That's right. They did hold them. But you, yeah. like we talked about, the turnovers, even though you had 14 tur- turnovers, Golden State had 13, but points off of turnovers, 24 points. Yeah. So that's your three-pointers there. That's the the, the, the extra three points you need. You can't give Golden State uh, that kind of uh, opposition points off of turnovers. You can't allow it. You know, you have to play spotless ball, damn near perfect perfection ball against a team like Golden State because when they get going, they'll hammer you eight ways from Sunday. And, yeah. and, and they've showed that throughout this series. Next topic. Anthony Davis and Drew Holiday, D.C., turned on, turned in very excellent performances. Drew Holiday had a triple-double, finishing 27 points, 11 assists, and 10 rebounds. 34 points for Anthony Davis in the game, seven, 19 rebounds uh, in the game. He was splendid. Both of those guys played out of world. It, too bad we didn't have a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, help from the bench. If the bench actually had a chance, because the bench can't help you unless the coach put him in the goddamn game. <laughs> You know, and you have Rondo play 29 minutes, 21 minutes, excuse me. Ian Clark played 30 minutes. You couldn't split those minutes up but with him and Jordan Crawford? Why didn't you pay Jordan Crawford, get him here, to help you in the playoffs and you don't play him? That's why L. Gentry don't have no goddamn championship rings. Yeah. That's why yeah. L. Gentry doesn't have a profusely excellent playoff resume. We get caught up in the fact that he makes the playoffs, but it, the end result is, why don't he advance? It's because he does stupid stuff like this when he gets the small ball thing stuck in his head. It's like he goes back, he, his mind recruit goes, uh, resets to grandpa mode when he says, I'm going to beat you with eight guys. Don't play everybody. Don't play all your assets. Then he turns around and says, small ball is the way I'm going to beat you when he could have adjusted the goddamn lineup to add a big in so they couldn't play the Hampton Five against you in that way. But it's just like, it's just the foolishness that we got to see through from there. And I'm going to just hold that because DC wants to hit, the, hit him with that. But speak about Holiday and Davis quickly so we get that next topic because I want to get to that L gentrification topic. <laughs> Holiday and Davis definitely did their thing, man. Uh, 
You got Batman and Robin, bro. I mean, but that's basically all we had. Between these two players, we we had about almost 50 shots. <laughs> I mean, um, they had to do that. So I'm not knocking them for taking 50 shots because if they didn't take those shots, you, like, you got blown we out probably you. wouldn't have 104. You got blown but out. You, you obviously can't have a free-flowing team where you have the ball movement just going all around. And, you know, you got 50 shots spread out between two players. I mean, if you look at that's the, not balanced. DC. If you look at the Warriors and look at their shots, you got Draymond Green taking eighteen. Durant took eighteen. What? Draymond Green took the same amount of shots as Durant. Wow. Steph Curry only took sixteen shots. Klay Thompson took twenty-two. You know, and we look at ours and we got AD took twenty-six, Holiday took twenty-one, and Etwan Moore took twelve. Nikolai Mirotic took nine. <laughs> you know. It gets a little disproportionate, man. It's it's just crazy how that goes, you know. That's the thing, you know what, DC. Let's just cruise right on up into um, this 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 this, this gentry non adjustments period because we've been touching upon it, and I think it's probably the most. Uh, hmm, I guess I would say probably the most uh, interesting and most passionate topic that I won't speak about. But let me hear your thoughts on uh, L Gentry's non adjustments that contributed to them losing because the coach set up all this, man. He got all that personnel. You mean to tell me you couldn't play nobody else but the same people? You know, over and over again, you couldn't make any adjustments? Seriously? Right, right. You know, talk on that. Um, we, we got a very similar mindset with some stuff. I know we disagree. Man, it'd be funny. But we got a similar mindset when it comes to Alvin Gentry. And you brought up a, a point about the Hampton Five, and I was thinking the same thing. Uh, the whole series, pretty much. Like, why are we not putting the Mega Ogre for out there? Uh, we're constantly coming from a standpoint, and that's bad coaching to me, where you are dictated, your moves are dictated by the other team. You are right. you were never put in the supreme position where you could challenge them to make an adjustment. To what they you're were doing. making adjustments based on Great what point. they felt like doing. Great point. You know, so if you you came out with a lineup with, let's say, a Mecca, a Mecca Ogre for Andy Davis, Meritage, Rondo and Drew Holiday or something like that. And uh, maybe give Etwan more, let him come off the bench. Or, or, you know, a different mix of that, whatever. How would they have adapted to that if you got a Mecca Okafor and they got the Hampton Five? You're going to put Draymond Green on AD, okay? So who's going to guard a Mecca Okafor? I mean, I understand a Mecca Okafor is not a superstar, but he is, he was a number one draft pick, and he's a very capable big man in the paint. So you, what you gonna put, Eagle Dollar on him? I will take a shot at him, and the people are like, well, they put Durant on him. Durant can guard the post, and yes, he can. And I would love to see him get yes. some fouls. Yes. <laughs> so yes. I would love to see Durant on Okafor, even if Okafor doesn't score, and he he takes energy away from Durant or yes. beats him up in the post, right. Sneakily or whatever. Just just one thing to give you an idea. And you brought up a thing about splitting time between Ian Clark and John Crawford. Man, I seen the game. Well, John Crawford came in and gave us 16 points in eight minutes. Like, I mean, come on. I think it was 14 points, something like that. Nah, it was 16, it was 16? points okay. in eight minutes. Right. He doubled Doubles. his production. Two points a minute, <laughs> you know. But he Every play minute a li- he was hitting the shot. You're right. You know what I'm saying? You so don't play that, man. Don't play a lot. He didn't. I don't think he missed any shots. Oh, he might have missed one shot. Right. And it's like, I understand he may not be the best defender, but... You don't need him to be if he you can score like that. He got roles. Give everybody. him 15, 14 right. minutes, and if, if he can give you 12 points, that's a win. I agree You know, with so you. it's yeah. like, then you got Sheik Diallo. We all know what he brings to the table. Hustle man, spark plug for the team. When he's out there making plays, everybody gets excited. He didn't even play in a closeout game. This is the last game of the season. You got guys that have been in the grinder, doing work all year. I feel like it's, it's a disservice to him to not even – Get on the court. You know what I'm saying? Guys that could have, you know, sparked something and turned things around from an energy standpoint. You know, it, it, it's, it's mind-boggling to me. The only guys that I could see or understand him not playing is Liggins, uh, Frank Jackson, because he can't play, he's hurt, and That's Solomon it. Hill. Solomon Hill, I mean. He, very, he virtually didn't you play Solomon give a, Hill, but, but played you gotta three give, minutes. You got to give him a temperature check based on what he did one game that allowed us to win. So, I understand him putting him out there for three minutes and seeing what's what's well, Solomon. You, if we get Solomon Grundy, or if we get Solomon Hill, so well, I can DC, I can understand that. I can understand your commentary, what you're saying. I agree wholeheartedly, hard, wholeheartedly with what you're saying. But Sol, as far as the heat check for Solomon Hill, what what they how how they registering his temper temperature annually? 
I mean, I mean, because the reality he gave him three three points, which is like a kick in the ass. I mean, but the I mean three minutes. But the, the I agree with you, DC, and I think that's absolutely right. That was very poignant, very on point. And you speak you well about doing that. You can't. No, you can't against the and, champs. And, and that is something that we've been saying this entire season from watching Gentry's method. We've been following the Pelicans for a while, but you know, closely we put the microscope on this team this entire past season, the off season leading into this season, then the regular season, then the postseason. We put the microscope on this team, analyze Gentry's methods, and and it's times when Gentry. Has to have somebody. I don't know if it's Finch or anyone. It probably ain't gonna be McMillan or none of those other guys. They don't seem like they're gonna. They have the power or the will to pull his to- his tail. But Finch or Urban, one of those guys, have to be able to pull his coattail and say, "Listen, man, you can't play seven and eight men a night and expect to win against a team like the Golden State Warriors. You can't do that. You got to use all your assets." And if I was right, well, if I was if I but Golden State is the defending champions. You're gonna do all. You're gonna need all your assets. And if I was at Dale Demps, I'd be a little yeah, bit. So you're going to need all the bodies. You're going to you, need hey, everything you got. I'm going to be honest with you. If I was Dale Demps, I'd be a little bit peeved about this because he did a great job in bringing in some of these guys. He did a great job in finding DeAndre Liggins defensively, not to see Elvin Gentry even utilize him like that. He did a great job in re-signing Jordan Crawford's shooting ability to right. not even play him at all. He did a good job in bringing back Emeka Okafor, who wasn't even on the radar, but he brought him back. And Okafor's defense, matter of fact, it was job getting Nikolai Meritage too. All of that, and then the, the he drafted Sheik Diallo, so it's like you have his players. This is his pick guys on the team that do they are not totally completely balanced players, but they do one thing very well. They all Liggins, have roles. They all have roles. Liggins is a defensive guy. He's known for it. Jordan Crawford is a sharpshooter that can get points for you real quick. Omeka Okafor is a big man. Uh, that can run the floor, play defense, clean up the boards for your second chance and shots. Get you and get some points in the paint. And she got Dia- an all right post paint game. He's not bad. And Sheik Diallo's a guy, is a high energy guy, gets rebounds, also cleans up the paint. But not to see any of those guys even play, like you said, in the closeout game, the assist to even prolong the series when a lot of people, the, the national commentators were talking, they were previewing the Rockets and the Warriors at halftime, and the it's Pelicans was only trailing by three or four points. Embarrassing, man. That's terrible. And that's why I said to myself, Joel Myers, I miss the hell out of Joel Myers. Because Joel Myers tell, and David West tell it like it is, and I and I wish that somebody up there in, in, in this high in organization Tell the networks, listen, man, you ain't going to cut us out at round one no more. If our team is going all the way to the championship, we should have the ability to broadcast them all the way up into the championship. You know, because I don't like these national yeah, I commentators. I would have rather watched the, I don't like the, these the, national Fox, commentators. the Fox Network and they, their Joe Myers and, and Joe uh, and they was then to listen to Shaquille O'Neal and Charles Bart. They have no e- emotional anything invested in the Pelicans. You know, they don't know nothing about the Pelicans except for Anthony Davis. It's the same stuff we said about, uh, what's the guy Everybody named? Everybody says a. Smith. we got a horrible bench. And all. Well, we, it ain't that we have the worst bench. and We don't play our bench. But nothing. I, with, I don't think we had a worse all, bench ever. But all of that Hall of Everybody Fame. Everybody talks but, about how bad our bench is. But DC, all that Hall of Fame we got experience. One, we got one guy on our bench comes in and gets you 18 points like it ain't nothing in the end club. And we got another guy like that in Jordan Crawford who we don't play. But all that championship experience, all them supposed to be brains about basketball set up there on that, on that halftime show. It did not mention the fact that L. Gentry was only playing seven people. Now, you could say three or three, uh, eight people, but Solomon Hill, he only gave him three minutes. What you going to do in three minutes? What you going to do in three minutes? He didn't do a damn thing in he three minutes. He got a block. He got an assist and, and a- one block. <laughs> that didn't help out. That wasn't nothing. But at the end of the day is what I'm saying. A player can't do nothing for the team unless the coach allows them to play. But the commentary of watching them national guys, they don't know nothing about this team. Except for well, Andy Davis is a big guy. He's an all-star. He's a superstar. Drew Holiday has arrived. We've been new Drew Holiday around. He arrived to you because you just found out. But we've been new about Drew Holiday. We've well, been following Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday arrived probably about four months ago. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why that's why I despise it, you know, and that's just something I hope that they change going forward. But anyway, DC, uh, let's look into this this series recap, uh, the playoffs recap, dealing with the Pelicans, of course, knocking off Portland, sweeping them, beautiful, uh, going and running to a grinder against Golden State. Uh, obviously, the season, the, the series went down when they lost. They they were blown out 
in game four at home when it was supposed to win that game. Then it became a best of three series. We could have prolonged it maybe to six or seven games. That's what I was seeing that the Pelicans could take, take advantage of the win in game four. They did not. They get blown out in that game. They go to Golden State, put in a much better effort. But then once again, Ron, uh, Rondo does not play uh, because of the groin injury. And then Elvin Gentry does not supplement. Uh, recap right. the season series playoff wise. Uh, what you thought about the Pelicans in the playoffs? Um, I, I think we did very well um, in the first round. And it's still piggybacking onto the L Gentry subject. And because we did well, I think that's what made Elvin Gentry not want to switch. Because if you remember before the season, we was running our whole bench. It got to a point where we started winning, running the whole bench, starting Emeka Okafor. Even though he only played probably 12 minutes or so a game, he came in, he started, he beat up the people in the post. He got some guys in, uh, with some fouls. Uh, he's, he got some points. He got 10, 11, 12 rebounds in 12 minutes or so. You know, uh, six, five of them offensive. And it's just to, like for you to not use a guy like that, man. I just got, I know we're on a different topic, but it's just very like mind blowing. It's like, come on, Algernon, do, do we want to win? Like, maybe that's why he was smiling in the press conference. He didn't give a shit. I, I saved my job. I don't care you what know, happens after this. DC, let me tell you something. You <laughs> I don't abs- know, you're absolutely it, right. It don't I was, make no sense. I was thinking about that earlier. You said that. And I, w- I wanted to mention that, that you're absolutely right. Uh, when Emeka Okafor came in and they switched the lineup to include Okafor at the center, which moved Anthony Davis. See, this, this is which, for us, the real which, Pelicans fan who which, watched the whole right, season. Which we were saying that at the time. Yeah. We're saying, D.C., listen, they're struggling against these teams because Anthony Davis doesn't like to play that five that much. No. He'll play it in spots, but you having him playing the entire He's game an at five. And I remember, he don't need to be down right. there banging I'm in like, the post, I'm like, L. Gentry man, has eight the Davis. Defensive when they end? played against Utah in the regular season, when they struggled right after that injury that happened to DeMarcus Cousins. And he got – they playing Utah, and this, this fool got Anthony Davis at center against Rudy Gobert. And Rudy Gobert just lent wise. The one time we up. beat Utah, I think we that was the game when we played him at Okafa. You got to Anthony and Davis allowed him to to, to let pl- Andy Davis be free for a while to right. retain some of his energy, and that's when he took to off to not have to bang with yes. Rudy Gobert. Right. So it, it's like if you have to do that extra defense, it, it it taxes you on the offense. It does. It 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 happens. But it's the reality situation is at the end of the day is it could have been a more prolonged series, and we're not. I know we had, we got a lot of Golden State Warriors fans that listen to the podcast, and welcome. Thank you for listening. But at the end of the day, this is not sour grapes. We're not speaking as a uh, uh, sour grapes fans. We we intellectual fans, but we we have the ability to recount and go back and say, listen, if this guy would have done this, this would have been better. And this is not you know uh, hindsight is twenty twenty. You know it, 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 all this kind of nonsense. We were saying that at the time. You're not going to beat anybody of worth by playing seven people against the Golden State Warriors and talk about goddamn pace and talk about outrunning them. You're not going to be if you don't get those guys the rest, it won't work. Well, yeah, Bottom even line. if you want to outrun them, which I feel like we did at some points, but how are you going to sustain that type you can't of level of energy you if can't. you don't get rest? That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're not going to have enough juice in the fourth quarter to keep it going or the third quarter. It seemed like after halftime, everybody took a nap at halftime and probably had to go eat or something because they, Cause they damn were all needing IVs and all that probably because they played most of the minutes. We get one break at about the three-minute mark in the first quarter and we see Ian Clark come out there and Terrius Miller and the Warriors to change their whole lineup and left one of their superstars out there. That's DC. Maybe like Durant or somebody. DC, and, and, you're and, right. And then they flip it when they come back in. Durant goes out. Steph Curry would come in, they Clay played. Thompson and all of that. They played Kevon. We never, we never rested our guys. And when the times when we chose to rest them, it was always at bad spots. They played Kevon Looney, the backup power forward, would have you 23 minutes in this game. Okay? Now, they, the Hampton 5, Draymond played 41. He scored 19. Iguodala played 25. He scored only 2. De, Durant had, he played 37, scored 28. Steph Curry had thir, thir, played 37, scored 28. Klay Thompson played 38 minutes, scored 23. David West had five minutes in the game. Kevon Looney had 23 minutes in the game. He had four points. Jordan Bell had six minutes in the game. He had two points. Quinn Cook played 14 minutes in the game, had five points. And Sean Livingston played 15 minutes, scored six points. Now, the reason I say that is to say Golden State went five guys deep in their rotation. 
Five guys. Five guys off the bench. Five guys. They played ten guys on the night where the Pelicans played seven. And then you and, and, and it's still and it's just a feat that we only lost by what we lost by. You cannot know Andy Davis is a superstar. He's great, and Drew Holiday is playing on another level. But you cannot commit. They played 46 minutes apiece, Drew Holiday and Anthony Davis in this game. That's totally stupid and dumb and foolish. And uh, and, and L Gentry, in that regard, is a fish-eyed fool for letting that happen. You can't do that. You have to play and be smart about coaching them people better than that. You can't run your athletes in the, the ground. And that's the same crap he did to DeMarcus Cousins. Is a reason why Cousins got hurt because he was playing them too much and not playing enough of his bench. Now I want I want y'all to understand something. We did win the rebound, but if you look at where our rebounds came from, it says a lot. We had our rebounds from Anthony Davis, 19 rebounds. Drew Holiday had 10. Then after that, you had Nikolai Meritage, all in your starting lineup. Our bench only had four rebounds. It's amazing, the man. The Warriors had one guy had seven rebounds on their bench, and they played four other people. It's amazing, man. But you know what? We got to wrap it up. But thank y'all for listening to the Pelican Post Game Report uh, on the PRO Media Network recapping Game Five. Of course, y'all keep listening. We're gonna have some more Pelican Post Game reports uh, covering as we'll move forward. The outlook of the season moving ahead. Should we bring back Demarcus Cousins? Uh, and other topics, free agent acquisitions, do we resign some of the guys, Ian Clark, Rajon Ronda, we'll cover all that on future shows. But from me in D.C., thank you for joining us. And go to patreon.com slash PRO Media Network. Show some support. Peace. Forget ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, world? This is D.C. from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Have you ever been sitting in front of your computer screen, or in traffic, tired, lacking energy, feeling drained? Did you know there are electromagnetic fields or EMF waves all around you that cause this disease? Get it? This? Ease? Luckily here at Posh Lifestyle, you can get your EMF protection. They have pendants, the shell dye bricks, cubes, and pyramids. Check out the PoshLifestyle.com. That's life spelled with a Y. P-O-S-H-L-Y-F-E-S-T-Y-L-E dot com for all your health needs. So get your mind and body right with a posh lifestyle. Clear, clean, great tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, an estimated two and a half million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution. And there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. With a deep commitment to providing the highest quality products and excellent customer service, Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book. Providing cost-effective, reliable water filtration systems for residential, commercial, and industrial customers worldwide. Offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental-friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 
101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today. What is big? Big is taking flight. Big is sending back that wheat sauce. Big is ball handling that sets the hardwood on fire. New Orleans Pelicans, do it big.